Gaming monitors are a category which spans across all price ranges, from models costing just about $100 with barely any gaming features in their basic specs to those well over $1000, which are not only good for gaming but are good monitors in general. Still, what most people are interested in are those sweet spot models that offer the most at a certain price. This is a domain where ASUS's VG series has had very convincing offerings, and even I had used a VG279Q for a long time, which I still consider one of the best choices for anyone looking for a good gaming monitor without breaking the bank. This time we got to test one of the newer models in this series, a VG279QM, which at around $390 is not super cheap but still brings a really good price performance ratio, along with some features not found even on higher end models. Ever since it was announced, I've been looking forward to trying it out since it is equipped with some advanced features which can improve the gaming experience and which practically make their debut on this model. It seems as if ASUS has decided to use the VG series to test out some experimental features which it can later use in its flagship models, but successful experiments can sometimes make an affordable model if not better than at least an equally good choice and make you question if it's worth spending the extra money. ASUS Top Gaming VG279QM has a very rich list of features, including the refresh rate of an impressive 280Hz, ELMB Sync function and G-Sync compatible and HDR certificates, so on paper it looks quite impressive. Let's see how it performs in use. Design-wise, VG series is quite different from the Republic of Gamers PG and XG models, which have that undoubtedly gaming look and very distinct design. At first glance, VG279QM could pass as an ordinary non-gaming model, with only a few details which give away its primary purpose. Those are the specific stand shape and the red detail in its base, NVIDIA and TUF gaming markings, as well as the discrete ornaments on the back of the panel, while the rest of the monitor has the usual simple black plastic look. Speaking of the stand, it offers a bit of extra flexibility than usual, so you can swivel the panel by 90 degrees left and right, pivot it by 90 degrees both ways, tilt by 5 degrees down and 43 degrees up, as well as adjust the height in 13 centimeters range. The panel is surrounded by fairly thin plastic bezels on all sides, and the width of those plus the narrow margin around the actual panel is only slightly wider than on monitors with super thin bezels and a wider margin, which we mostly see these days. Which solution looks better is a matter of personal preference, so let us know how you like this one. Speaking of design choices, menu control, like on most ASUS models, is done via a mini joystick behind the bottom right edge of the panel, plus four additional keys which are staggered in height so you can identify them easily without looking. You will mostly be using the mini joystick, while the additional keys are used as shortcuts for often used gaming functions. Combined with a very clear and simple menu, this is one of the best solutions of its kind, though there are some small annoyances like, for instance, when you want to deactivate one of the gaming features like a crosshair timer, frame rate display or mid-screen sniper magnification, you can't do it by simply unchecking the option in the menu, but have to press the key below the mini joystick twice, which is not very logical or practical. The connectors are placed in a usual location on the bottom of the back of the panel, and in it there are two HDMI 2.0 ports, one DisplayPort 1.2, 3.5mm headphone jack, and one covered and unmarked USB-A port, which we assume is reserved for service use and firmware updates. There's also a power connector, and as usual ASUS uses an external adapter about the size of one for modern laptops. The panel of this model is a fast IPS, fast both in terms of refresh rate and response time, both of which are necessary for a good gaming monitor. Maximum rate the refresh rate of this panel is 240Hz, but ASUS enables you to overclock it up to 280Hz, which in our experience works flawlessly, so there's no reason for you not to use it. Panel resolution is only Full HD, which for some of you might be a deal breaker, especially on 27 inches due to lower sharpness and detail in games, but on the plus side, this resolution allows you to take full advantage of high refresh rate in modern esports games, assuming you have sufficiently powerful processor and graphics card, which is turning into a rather expensive hobby these days. In any case, this is a monitor which shows its full potential when you're running games between 200 and 280 FPS, of course using the variable refresh rate, free sync on AMD or G-Sync on NVIDIA GPUs, both of which are officially supported. G-Sync seems to be preferred though at over 240Hz, since above that we've had problems on AMD cards with variable refresh rate not being active, even though everything was seemingly okay. 
It might just be some momentarily incompatibility with 6000 series GPUs, which can be solved by a driver update. The specialty of this model is that it is, if not the first one, then definitely among only a few models that allow for a simultaneous use of variable refresh rate and backlight strobing in order to improve the response time, so you don't have to choose one or the other. Asus calls this ELMB Sync, and we have to say it's one of the most important innovations we've seen on gaming monitors, since it has a significant impact on gaming experience. This practically means that there's no tearing and stuttering, and at the same time there is no blurring of objects that are moving fast on the screen, or when you're quickly looking around. The response time that VG279QM achieves with active G-Sync or FreeSync is at most half of what other models we've tested were capable of, and the best thing is that it works up to full 280 Hz, not only 120 as is often the case, which makes it one of the best models you can get for competitive gaming. With ELMB Sync disabled, the response time is decent, but activating it gets you a very clear motion display with only a slight overshoot and doubling of fine detail at 220 Hz and above in darker parts of the scene, and almost perfect motion clarity in brighter ones. We've seen monitors with active strobing that had even better motion clarity, but this is still the best you can get on any monitor with variable refresh rate active. It seems that IPS models have finally reached a level comparable to TM panels in terms of response time, so with great viewing angles, this is a perfect combo for gaming. We've already mentioned some gaming features such as crosshair and timer display, but there's also an interesting FPS indicator which can display the current refresh rate or frame rate if you're using variable refresh rate, both as number and as a graph, allowing you to see how it changes during the game, which can be useful for fine-tuning the graphic settings to make the most out of high refresh rate. As for display quality, this is one of the models that advertise the HDR support, though as expected it is pretty basic since the maximum brightness is rated at 400 nits, which the monitor exceeded a bit in our measurements by 10 in SDR and 20 in HDR modes. In most predefined picture modes tuned for various gaming genres, the black level was around 0.2 to 0.35 nits, standard for an IPS, and the contrast in brightest scenery mode was measured at 1171 to 1, which is pretty good for this panel type. Backlight uniformity is also pretty good, as well as the lack of light bleeding around the edges, with an expected but moderate IPS glow in the corners. The AU Optronics panel, which was used, is 8 bits per color channel, but able to cover a solid 78.5% of DCAP free gamut. Color accuracy is on the edge of being good for a gaming monitor, which to be fair wasn't even a goal, so the best measured delta E deviation was 3.2, of course in sRGB mode. Speaking of measurements, even though input lagging games is great over DisplayPort, we can't say the same for HDMI at low refresh rates, when the latency can be as high as 35 milliseconds, which is a bit unexpected and may spoil the fun for someone looking to connect this monitor to a gaming console, including the PlayStation 5 for games running at 60fps. Overall, ASUS Top Gaming VG279QM absolutely delivers and is currently one of the best options for those looking for a fast gaming monitor. Sure, $390 is not super cheap, but with the performance that this model offers, you do get an excellent value for your money. ELMB Sync sets this monitor apart from others, so if you have a PC that can keep the frame rate as close to 280 as possible, we highly recommend it. For those with less powerful PCs or limited budget, ASUS also offers the VG279Q without M in its name, which refreshes at 144Hz, unfortunately does not support ELMB Sync, but costs around $290, so it may be an even more interesting choice for many gamers. That would be all for this review, but we invite you to share your opinions and experiences with this monitor in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this video enough to give us a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting tech content. Keep watching Bench House, my name is Ivan and I'll see you next time.